Good. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Christopher Gary. I'm the Dean of the Graduate School of Development at the University of Central Asia. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the University of Central Asia to the ninth annual Life in Kyrgyzstan, or LIK, conference hosted here in Bishkek, the Park Hotel, and online. So thank you very much for being here. As in our eight predecessor conferences, this LIK conference brings together a community of researchers, development practitioners, policymakers, civil society advocates, and others committed to the collective effort of making the world a better place for us and for those that follow us. We've had, I understand, around 200 registrations for this year's conference, attracted by the impressive array of papers on subjects ranging from poverty to entrepreneurship, education, civil society, air pollution, the green economy, migration, climate change, cultural heritage, public attitudes, women's political participation, the sustainable development goals, and so much more, including what promised to be two wonderful set piece keynote speeches, one later this evening on the correlates of life satisfaction by Dr. Michelle Brock from the EBRD, and a second tomorrow lunchtime on the down to upstream challenges of food security in the mountains of Central Asia by UCA's own Dr. Arno Kaiserman. Now, the more astute among you will know that the Life in Kyrgyzstan conference is named after the study that facilitated the collection of unique individual and household data that took place in Kyrgyzstan in 2010, 11, 12, 13, 16, and 19. These publicly available data did and continue to allow researchers, students, practitioners, and policymakers to shine a light into the lives of ordinary Kyrgyz people, to understand how they navigate and experience an increasingly complex world framed by climate change, stagnating economies, natural disaster, inward and outward migration, pandemics, and of course, conflict. These data have helped us to understand Kyrgyz society and economy. These data are precious and rare, but the last collection was in 2019, and Kyrgyzstan risks losing this precious public good, this rare gateway to evidence-based policymaking and to the international community of scientists studying the lives people live through longitudinal monitoring. And all this at just the time when countries will begin the scramble towards their UN Agenda 2030 commitments to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Just imagine what the LIK data could offer to policymakers, development agencies, civil society, the research community, private companies, universities, and schools, if continued in the years ahead. So let us use this conference to highlight just how powerful research can be when individual people are placed at the center of analysis. And through this, to remind stakeholders, donors, grant agencies, and other funders how critical it is to try to find a way to keep this rare and precious LIK data collection alive. With that plea having been made, I'd like to thank our co organizers, the Leibniz Institute of Vegetable and Ornamental Crops and the International Security and Development Center in Berlin as well as our partners at the American University of Central Asia, Mercy Corps, World Bank, and the United Nations Population Fund. We all hope that you will enjoy the conference, that you'll continue to work on and care about the topics that really matter to people's lives. And so before we move to the group photo and the real substance of the day, let me invite a few words of welcome and inspiration from senior representatives of these partners. So in order, Dr. Timothy O'Connor, the president of American University of Central Asia, Navid Nassan Nakvi, the country manager of the World Bank, and Bhaktibek Kanazarov, head of office at UN um, Population Fund. And of course, the brains and energy behind the LIK study, Professor Tillman Brook of Humboldt University, IGZ, ISDC, and probably numerous um, other places too. So without further ado, I'll pass the floor to Dr. Timothy O'Connor. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. Welcome. Uh, the American University of Central Asia has been a partner of the Life in Kyrgyzstan study since 2015. We're quite proud of this relationship. We welcome the experts assembled uh, to share knowledge, experiences about life in uh, in Kyrgyzstan, but also Central Asia. And uh, on a personal note, I'm especially pleased uh, that uh, the focus is on evidence-based policy making. I think that's uh, a, a, fundamental, a fundamental importance for this conference and for that matter, for any, uh, any significant research uh, undertaking. It seems to me that the American University of Central Asia is a natural partner of the Life in Kyrgyzstan study and of course of this conference for, for several reasons. Um, first, we focus on the, the classical liberal arts and sciences uh, with, with its emphasis on critical thinking, creative, um, uh, creative and critical thinking, and especially freedom of expression, freedom of thought. That is, we, we, we prize academic freedom, and that, of course, is true of this, of this conference as well. Second, we focus on the ESG model of sustainable development, of, of, of sustainability, with its emphasis on environmental awareness, inclusive socialization, and especially in the context of academia, of higher education, of, of shared governance. Third, our university is quite international. And wise people told me many years ago, if you want a successful project, build a, find an international team. I, in my experience, that, that statement is quite true. We have um, uh, 1,600 students at our university, uh, and uh, we're proud to say that um, they represent 25 different countries. And so uh, we think that internationalization has to be a, a, a primary focus. Probably though most significant, our, our emphasis is on community building. That is um, the, the, the English word well-being. Often I think the Russian term blagopaluchia is even, is even stronger. Uh, and it, I'm not talking about financial or economic uh, well-being. That's important. Uh, no one is, uh, we all need money. There's, there's no doubt. But uh, what is the, the, uh, the, the, um, the atmosphere, the environment, uh, for not only for the collective, but for each individual therein? And um, we strive to promote then the community as a whole by looking after each individual within said community. Finally, since we're all in Bishkek, this beautiful city in, in Kyrgyzstan, uh, the, uh, with its one with its uh, tremendous uh, natural beauty, uh, the, the American University, the American University of Central Asia, promotes the Kyrgyz national sovereignty by the quality of our graduates. That is to say, we believe in 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 full support for uh, the sovereignty of the of the Kyrgyz uh, nation state. And over the pe past 30 years, our university celebrates its 30th anniversary this year. We have contributed to this economy, to this society, uh, some really um, splendid uh, uh, individuals who have made their mark not only here, but elsewhere in the world. And we're quite proud of this record. And we think that uh, our contribution to the ongoing development, sustainable development of the Kyrgyz society is largely based on the quality of our graduates. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much uh, for the kind uh, invitation to speak at this very important conference. As mentioned, this is the ninth in a series and it has become a fixture in uh, the intellectual and research life of, uh, of people who look at uh, important factors that contribute to Kyrgyzstan's development trajectory. And in that spirit, I think I look forward to, and my colleagues from the bank look forward to listening to all of you who are contributing to uh, either by direct con 
presentations or by uh, interacting during these presentations to the insights that you bring, uh, because these insights, as you will understand, inform the work that organizations such as the World Bank do. Not just the bank, but also other multilaterals such as ADB, BRD, the bilaterals, all are looking to find a way to most effectively contribute to, to uh, the Kyrgyz society's uh, development. Since we sit here on a sunny day, uh, thankful for where we are in, in, in a very beautiful country, I think it's also important to reflect on a few things that we can see are going to be a big factor in the near future. I'm thinking primarily of uh, both the opportunities for the country to grow. It is a low income country, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars per capita. There's a long way to go. There are uh, neighbors that are doing much better. It stands at a place where uh, some very big markets are not very far away. Russia has been a traditional market. There are markets in South Asia, there are markets in China that can be a source of great wealth for uh, people and businesses should they find the right environment in which to grow. So should they find the right, the right skill set among its uh, students, the right uh, business environment, regulatory and otherwise, I think uh, the, the potential is limitless. But the challenges that we face are also quite stark. The private sector, especially large private sector, is, is non-existent. Private investment that you see coming in is largely in mining and by definition extractive. Doesn't employ a lot of people. The investment needs to be diversified. I think I look forward to hearing from the conference on how we might go about doing that. Uh, then I think the climate challenge is going to pose a lot of questions to all of us across the world, but particularly here. It is one of the most uh, climate vulnerable countries in the world. To give you a sense of the kind of investment that is needed for what is called a green transition, first let me set it in, in, in global terms. So globally, the global economy is about 100 trillion. And I've seen estimates that it'll take between eight and $10 trillion to effect the green transition over the next decade. So you're talking of perhaps 10% every year. So this is, uh, these are global numbers. This doesn't account for the difference in uh, need, the difference in wealth across uh, north and south, developed and developing countries. But when you come to a country like the Kyrgyz Republic, the national economy is about $11 billion. And I've seen estimates that in order to meet our uh, goals that the nationally uh, determined goals that have been uh, committed to under COP 26, 27, we will need anywhere between 10 and $15 billion. So you're looking at 150% of GDP over a 10 year period. We don't have that kind of money. No one has that kind of money. I often see in conversations with uh, academics, but also amongst policymakers, um, I think we're still trying to come to grips with how we're going to deal with this challenge. I, I've heard policymakers say 
uh, we can come up with 15% of this amount and perhaps when we're looking for support for 85% of it. If you take this globally, you know that if $10 billion, if $10 trillion is required, the total amount that you can hope to get is only 15% of that, maybe 1.5 trillion over a 10 year period. These are big numbers and of course there are some assumptions that go into these estimates. But I, I just want to make the point that the climate is changing. Some of you will have seen New York underwater last week. Uh, some months ago, Greece was flooded. Um, there are these climate change events all across the world. My own home country, Pakistan, saw huge floods. Like here in Kyrgyzstan, Pakistan's glaciers are also melting at a very rapid pace. We may have half the glaciers we have now within 20 years. The glaciers in Kyrgyzstan are, are melting at a rate of 4 to 5% every year. I mean, it's, it, it, it's truly frightening. Now, there's a lot of uh, thought and research that needs to go into looking at mitigation and adaptation and getting ready with the right energy policy, the right water policy, the right agriculture policy to deal with this change. And I, as we talk of entrepreneurship, of climate change, I think uh, life in Kyrgyzstan, means that we have to focus on what effect this is going to have on the people and their lives, what effect this is going to have on their livelihoods, on their communities, uh, both in, in, in urban settings, but also in, in rural settings. What does this mean for us? And what guidance do researchers and, uh, and others that look at this what guidance can they provide for, for organizations such as the World Bank, but also government, other policymakers, people who set the research agenda at great universities such as the UCA, the uh, American uh, University of Central Asia, and other local long-standing institutions. So I look forward to this uh, conference to uh, hear from what your research uh, has has found, which can uh, throw some light on the on on some of these and other many challenges. I'm pleased to know that I Baker Ashirov and uh, Gohar Ulyamian uh, from the World Bank will be speaking uh, in the morning, late in the morning, on some of the work that we've done in our research among communities and also our analytics around growth and development challenges. Uh, with that, I want to thank all the organizers for organizing the conference and for giving the World Bank the opportunity to, to also contribute to this discussion. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Let me pass over to the back to back. Thank you. Dear uh, colleagues, dear uh, participants of the conference, it's a great pleasure for us to take part for the third time uh, in this uh, annual conference. UNFPA, uh, for the first time, supported two years ago, and we are privileged to support this platform because it, first of all, gives an opportunity not just to see the research or analysis, it also contributes to uh, build the evidence-based uh, data culture in the country. UNFPA stands strong to promote the evidence-based data. And as you know, last year, Kyrgyzstan also took very important steps and also implemented the internationally important uh, exercise such as population and housing census. And this year is a great opportunity for us to see these results. And one, in one of the plenary sessions, uh, National Statistics Committee representatives will share the preliminary first results of the census. Data is important, and at the same time, analytics is also very 
important, paramount to decision making process. And to build the evidence based data, of course, the academia plays a key role in the country and also in the global level. All these uh, global ambitious goals, such as SDGs or any strategic document which is taken by the government, is not possible to achieve without having the evidence based data available. And I believe that all the thematic sessions which are included in Life in Kyrgyzstan will be used for, by our uh, not only participants, not only by academia, not only by decision makers, but also by the population of the Kyrgyzstan. Because all of this research and available data, it gives us to analyze the situation in Kyrgyzstan, to understand the people-centered approach, to understand the vulnerability of the people in Kyrgyzstan. And I, I am very grateful that from all over the world, um, from different part of the regions, we have these researchers and give us an opportunity to work and to understand the role of the academia. In the end, I would like uh, to thank once again the organizers and giving us an opportunity on behalf of the UNFPA and from the UN system to take active part and support. And we will be delighted to continue this, ex to this work. I want to thank uh, for commitment and uh, for expertise and for your invaluable contributions for everyone here. Together, I believe we can turn data into action and aspirations into reality. Let the conference begin, and may it be the source of inspiration and uh, <clears throat> empowerment for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, back to back. Tillman, please. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the ninth annual Life in Kyrgyzstan conference. For 14 years now, I love coming to visit and work in Kyrgyzstan and work with my Kyrgyz colleagues and friends. Kyrgyzstan is obviously a very beautiful country, rich in natural and human resources, and full of potential for future development. And the people in Kyrgyzstan have always welcomed me openly with curiosity about my work and with great hospitality. So in short, it's really good to be back in Bishkek. Um, Kyrgyzstan is a beautiful country at the heart of Central Asia, at the crossroads of powerful global trends, including climate change, like we just heard, growing inequalities, political radicalization, and the fluctuations of rising and falling globalization. Kyrgyzstan is also at the crosshairs of brutal geopolitical competition, competing for attention from larger, more powerful neighbors and partners close by and far away. These are challenges that all countries in the world face, but for smaller, open, and middle-income countries like Kyrgyzstan, these challenges are even harder to overcome. Today and tomorrow, we want to draw on evidence from the long-term Life in Kyrgyzstan study and relate micro-level data sources to understand how people in Kyrgyzstan have coped with these challenges. Our focus for change will not be on the country at large, on balance of payments or the budget deficit or the national rate of inflation. Instead, we want to ask what livelihoods people pursue, how farmers navigate production for domestic and export markets, how people cope with drought, heat, and floods, if people can feed themselves and their families adequately, how women and men relate to each other, how migration shapes family welfare, and what hopes and dreams people have for the future. Today and tomorrow, we want to place people at the center of our analyses and discussions, finding out what has happened in the country and how to make better policies that work for people in Kyrgyzstan. The team from the Life in Kyrgyzstan study have been collecting data from a large cohort of people, about 8,000 people, since 2010, tracking the same 8,000 people year in and year out. We think it needs high quality panel data like that to generate evidence on which effective policies can be built. And if policies sometimes fail, then that's okay, as long as we learn from the failure and make an effort to do better next time. People's lives are too important to leave to ideology. We strongly believe that people deserve scientifically founded evidence. And the annual Life in Kyrgyzstan conference aims to provide exactly that. I would like to thank all of our partners 
over many years for their support and encouragement. Above all, the University of Central Asia and its fantastic team led by Chris Gary, as well as my long-term co-author and friend, Damir Esen Aliyev, who have helped to organize another fantastic event. Thank you all for being part of this journey. I wish us a successful conference and first of all, a beautiful conference picture. Thank you. Okay, I, I think um, while we're all looking fresh and beautiful, um, it's, it's a good time to uh, take a group photo to record the, um, the ninth conference. So if you'd like to make your way doing it at the front yeah if you'd like to make your way to the front and and you'll be uh, you'll be instructed by our, our technicians as to what to do next